Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Vampire. And we are still here in Whitechapel, guys. We need to find a way into Darius's house. But before we do that, we have to um, have a chat here with Joe's son. We kind of skipped through that because I thought that we did it out of turn. But now that we know the true relationship between Joe and... What was his son's name? Harry... I kind of want to go ahead and have a chat with him. We also need to go to a workbench and get some remedies for all the sick people here in Whitechapel. That's kind of crazy. And apparently there's two other people that we have not ran into yet. So this should be interesting. Good evening, Harry. May I come in? Sure. Sure. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? Yeah, it depends on the day, really. Now, before I talk to you, I'm going to go ahead and raid the house. Because while Joe does, you know, have a legit reason to be upset and wasn't upset, we will uh, go ahead and kind of take a tax. You know what I mean? Ooh. It's locked. Interesting. Job refusal letter. Dear Mr. Peterson, it is my duty to inform you of our refusal to accept your application for a job at the dockyard. I must thank you for the time spent in our office explaining the difficulty of your situation with your ill boy and the loss of your beloved wife, but it is also my duty to point out the policy of our company, which expressly reproves the employment of former criminals or convicts. Your unfortunate connections with the ill-famed wet boot boys have been duly noted. These are hard times, sir. And Finch and Harper intend to reward first the candidates who pass the small inquiry we like to conduct about our future employees. You have my deepest sympathy, and may God be with you and your family. Sincerely, R.D. Harper. Ooh, bet Joe is not a fan. Professional vampire hunters. What? If you ever suspect someone to be a vampire, don't try to kill yourself. You have, or kill it yourself. <laughs> you have no chance. Instead, contact me and try to inform a professional vampire killer. These men and women are rare, but they know what to do against these evil creatures. It even seems that some of them are working together under the name of Guard of Prywin, a paramilitary organization dedicated to the eradication of vampires in London. They are your friends, and you are not alone. Solutions exist. Be smart and spread the word. Clarence Crossley. For more information, please contact me directly. Hmm. Now the question is, okay, we'll take some shillings. Who was looking at that letter? Was it Joe or Harry? Ooh, there's the safe. Excuse me, Harry. Even my dreams are soaked with gloom. Large box of pills. So, May I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Plenty. How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm. Speaking of which... What can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. Well, that could be either. Forgive my bluntness, young man. But you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? Compared to other places that we've seen in Whitechapel? Yes. I'm sure your father did his best when he found this house. Times are tough for everyone, young man. That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I... I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. 
I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. Yowza. Okay, we'll go ahead and ask about Crane, then we'll go into personal questions, we'll do a medical checkup, and then we'll head to the workbench. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. Yes, I know her. She came here to examine me when I was very sick. She said I should go out more. She kind of, or He kind of reminds me of Colin from The Secret Garden. Oh dear. Okay. Your father and Mr. Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. Hmm. Would it ease tensions with your father if he got an honest job? Because he tried, you know. I can't say. I'd be glad if he dropped his thuggish activities. But I'm not sure it would be enough. Why is that? Sometimes I suspect it's me, Dr. Reed. Or it's this life. It's like I can't find my place. Well, you're not going to find out your place if you stay here all the time. Do you remember when Barrett Lewis was close to your family? To your mother? Not really. I was too young. But I remember it was a happier time. Mr. Lewis was funny. He often had dinner with us. How was he towards you? He was nice, I guess. He never forgot my birthday. He always offered me books. I liked books. Why are you sad, then? Because it hurts to remember a time when my father used to laugh and smile. It hurts to realize he's as sad as me now. Hmm. Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. Okay, another treatment for fatigue. I will see you later. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? Now, can we get any further conversations? Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Oh, there we go. What do you know of Harry Peterson? The boy seems so fragile. Not like his father at all. Harry's a good boy, but he spends most of his time complaining. He's had it tough, all right, but he needs to grow a pair. What troubles him, exactly? Well, despite being his father's son, almost everything, I think. He never wanted to come to Whitechapel in the first place. Hates this place more than most of us. And here we go. Barrett, you had an affair with Joe's wife, didn't you? Yeah, I did. She's the only woman I loved. My first regret is that she stayed with Joe after Harry was born. The second is I never shed a tear when she died. Did you ever try talking to Joe? Never. But I suspected he knew everything, even without knowing it. And he decided to make me pay in his own way. And here's the question we really want an answer to. Do you mean... You're Harry's father. No one will ever know for sure. And it's better that way. And I don't believe I'd have been all that bad as a dad. Hmm. Well, that's all the hints. 
Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. And we'll go talk to Joe real quick and ask him about honest work. Cheap price. Good you again? Come on, what do you want this time? All right, there, Colossus. Harry doesn't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why did you make him come here? I've always put my son's interests above everything else, whatever he may think. Our house is small but affordable. The walls are thin, but the door is solid. You really love your son, don't you, Mr. Peterson? He's my pride and joy. Even if he hates me for the choices I make and pushes me buttons more than he should. Do you have any regrets? Only one. Not to have my beloved wife by my side. She died when Harry was little. My sweet Jane. She gave the boy confidence. He just kind of, he's doing what he can. Since the criminal nature of your job means you could be arrested, are you not afraid of what would happen to your boy if you were? No one will ever take my son away from me. If that ever occurred, I'd, I'd hunt the bastard down and rip off his head with my bare hands. Why do you keep on working for the gang, Joe? You know it doesn't suit you. It's true, I hate this job. And I know I made some bad choices, but I'm a wet boot boy now. And people won't forget it. You could leave tomorrow. Start another life in another town. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. We are poor. My son's weak. And there's no way he'll endure another disappointment. I figure getting out of this would be a positive thing. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. So, now let's go ahead and look. We've got maximum blood quality for Barrett Lewis, 4,000 XP. And one thing that we need to do, like that's the Lady of the Night, Albert, Benjamin, so much to do in this game. I love it. Cold, bronchitis, fatigue, 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 migraine. He's recovering. We need to go ahead and sleep, I guess, for the cases to heal themselves. And we still got those two people, and I have no idea where to find them. Um, I do know one thing we need to do, because I had derped it up by not holding the A button. We need to go ahead and get another thing of that cordial potion. Is this the... Okay, this is the entrance to the safe house. Where do we go? Is she right up here? The Swanborough Cordial can be the answer to all your problems. Yes, indeed. Good evening, my dear colleague. Anything new? I don't think so. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling. There we go. One thing of the cordial. Now we actually have it in our inventory. We've got the docks. We've got some other areas that we could explore here in Whitechapel because we went through this way and there's still like this fountain area and this, I, I think there's plenty of opportunities to go find those other two people. We just have to track them down. Silver cut clothing. So let's head back into the safe house. We'll see if we can make some remedies for everyone. That is... That's the dad. Or the stepdad, for lack of a better term. There we go. I think we already cleared the safe house of any unwanted undead. So far we've only found one friendly fanged face in this entire city. Okay, that's been refilled. We'll sleep here in a second because we do have quite a bit of XP. And we need, let's, let's go ahead and look at our invent, what we need here. We need fatigue, 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 three fatigues. 
migraine, cold and bron bronchitis, three fatigues, cold and bronchitis, and a migraine, and a partridge in a pear tree. So treatments. One, two, three. Treatment for cold. Treatment for bronchitis. Pneumonia. We haven't seen pneumonia yet. Or sepsis or anemia. We'll probably find those soon. And is there any kind of upgrades we can do? To Dragonbane? Ooh. Common handle part. And enhanced handling and increased blood absorption. Yoink. There we are. Looks good to me. And then we'll need more common trigger parts to upgrade the Barker. Now, we're going to go ahead and... Oh, the cordial. It can only be it can be recycled into components. All we get is the glass vial. Well, that's a shame. I was really hoping that that was going to uh, pay more dividends. So if the bottle of cheap gin, we just get... Hmm. Well, I'm going to keep that then, because I'm not exactly sure what that's used for. It could be useless, because that would make sense, but... I want to be better safe than sorry. Actually, before we go to sleep, I want to go ahead and administer the, cu the cures to everyone and then crash out. I think that'll be, that'll be better. At least I'm hoping. And we also need to, uh, actually, let's go ahead and, t and uh, try and find a way into Darius' house. I'd like to do some... I don't want to get distracted like I've done in other RPGs, just doing side quests. We need to kind of keep our eyes on the prize here. And what was... Oh, okay. It's a rat. And turn this way. Its effectiveness has been proven by many. Uh -huh. The flu is no match for the Swanborough Cordial. Well, I doubt it. But we'll see. Now, time for some dirty shenanigans. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away. Mesmerize level 2 required. Oh, I see. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see, Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. No, that was easy. Didn't even have to use any powers. Darius's house. Just stealing everything. Don't worry about me. Decent house compared to other stuff that we've seen. Bottle of cheap gin. Large box of pills. Shillings, a two person bed. It's locked, all right. Ooh. The antique figure of the Vrykolakas. Of my many journeys, I believe I was the most amazed by my exploration of the Mediterranean Isles, and particularly the island of Santorini. 
searching for traces of vampire presence in these sunburnt lands. Herodotus himself refers to the island in his fourth book, and I'm personally convinced that there are many mysteries to be unveiled in this part of the world. Who knows that even today, the island of Santorini is still considered by some as the most vampire-infested place in the world, way more than the Carpathians, and that its inhabitants are considered as specialists in the vampire hunt, or the hunt for the Vrykolakas, as they call this creature. According to the local myths, the Vrykolakas is a dead person who does not decay, and who can show a vermilion complexion as long as he is gorged with fresh blood. He cannot enter a house without knocking and getting a response. Garlic makes him flee. He does not consume under the sun, but his skin blackens. He can change into wolf and other animals. What struck me the most is the same name exists, with small variations from the Mediterranean Sea to the Balkans. The Greeks call him the Vrykolakas. The Bulgarians and the Macedonians name him Varkolak, or... Varkolak. The Serbians call him Vukodlak. Yes, Vukodlak, a name so similar to the Volkod that we may we all already know, my dear brothers, and we may already know, my dear brothers. Just to write the few words now gives me the shivers. I'm personally convinced that we are here confronted to some of, or confronted to some of proto vampire. Maybe they are a missing link between the modern vampires and the creatures that came before them. If God allows me enough time, I wish one day to go back to Santorini Island and find the trail of this antique and forgotten figure. From Drinking of the Fountain of Knowledge by Usher Talltree, Primate of St. Paul. Getting all the lore today. And all the materials. Okay. Can we have a chat with uh, Darius before we talk to Nurse Crane? If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. Now remember, we did find that letter that essentially mean, said that he was giving up his family to protect Dorothy. So Dorothy's real name is not Crane. Like myself and many people in this area, Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man, for sure, but a very poor writer. <laughs> Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough, and clever, too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Progescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. Tell me more? Did we already do that? Yeah, we did. Personal questions? Oh, we got all the stuff here. Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. You lie! This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I'm an old dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. Don't be embarrassed, sir. 
If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. And now, let's go ahead and get into the awkwardness. How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. And I still see a dark future ahead for my people. Hmm. Okay, let's double check. Tell me everything you know. Okay. Do, not... Do you need some help, Mr. Petrescu? I am very tired, but that is all. I don't need you, Doctor. We'll give some medicine. Here you go. Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor. <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Oh, he had bronchitis. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. Alright, we have enough time. Let's go ahead and uh, chat to Dorothea. I'm really surprised there's not... Um, actually, first thing... Aha! Now I can get in here without having to go through the house. And, yeah, medical supplies. Well, I don't know, that might be a long conversation. And to tell you the truth, I'm curious why this area is the way it is. Because I'm wondering if there's going to be a fight or a scrap or something going on in here. I'll tell you what, let's, let's talk to Dorothea at the beginning of the next episode, and let's give out some cures in the meantime, at least some of them, and we can divvy out the rest later. Cheap price, good quality, come on, take a look, don't be afraid. Now, who had bronchitis that we need to make another thing for? Like fatigue, fatigue, fatigue. Migraine. He's recovering. He's recovering. Okay, we did we did go ahead and give out the right one. Cool. Knock, knock. Good evening, Harry. May I come in? Sure. Sure. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Not getting this uh, cure I'm about to give you. Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. You'll feel better with this. But you need to get a grip, young man. Medication alone won't cure melancholia. I'm not sure I'm happy with the idea of living long in a world like this. But I thank you for your concern, sir. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Joe will probably be happy. Even my dreams are soaked with gloom. Alright, then we got... The prostitute who was walking around here. Hello? Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? And apparently we don't get to see her. <laughs> Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends. I am shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. 
I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. And then finally, we'll talk to the reporter. And we will <laughs> conclude our rounds for the day. Question is, where did he go? It seems that most of them come over to around this area. They tend not to go over there because that's where the skulls were. You look so pale, my lord. Would you like me to revive you? I don't think you have the medicine that I'm looking for. And there he is. Good evening, doctor. Can I help you? Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. All right, good stuff. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. So we have treated quite a few of London's people. Um, we've got entry into uh, Dorothea's secret clinic, so and would you like me to revive you? And apparently, we've helped morale <laughs> very well. So we will go ahead and end the episode here and pick it up next time. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.